Hello everyone, my name is Aris Anwari and my research topic is radio frequency induction heated membranes in vacuum membrane distillation. Can you imagine one day without drinking any water? It's impossible, right? I think all of you heard about water scarcity which is listed as the largest global risk these days. It means we have lack of enough fresh water resources. But how is it possible while more than 70% of the Earth's surface is water? That's seawater. It means more than 96% of the Earth's uh, water is seawater. But each glass of seawater contains around 10 grams of salt. That's too salty for drinking. But we can treat that by using a special filter paper that just allows water to pass through it and stops the salt. But, thi but this filtration method needs a preheating of water. It means whatever seawater we want to treat, first we need to preheat that to the 60 to 70 degrees centigrade and then filter it. By this method, more than 99% of the salt will be removed and will get drinking water. But imagine each person needs at least eight glasses of water per day. But the energy consumption for uh, eight glasses of uh, water by this method is equal to the energy consumption of lightning 80 light bulbs per hour. So imagine one day, one week, one month, and one year, and how many people we are. That's a lot of energy, while energy crisis is another challenge these days. That's the point of focus of my research, to propose and develop an efficient water treatment method. The method that I propose doesn't need any preheating. Instead, the water will be directly heat heated on the surface of the filter. How? By using the, the heating method that we use for uh, cooking, the induction cooktops, that you heard it's an efficient uh, cooking method these days. How it works? We have a metal pot and we have an induction coil. By holding this pot around this induction coil, the food or water inside of the uh, pot will be heated because the heat will be induced to the metal pot. It's exactly the way that I'm using for filtration method. I coat the iron nanoparticles on the surface of the filter paper and expose that to the induction coil because it's iron, it's metallic, so it will be heated in the induction coil. And then the water will be heated directly on the surface of the filter and then we can, we can get drinking water. By this method, we'll get, we can get uh, eight times more drinking water while consuming six times less energy, which confirms this method is an efi efficient and promising alternative to the uh, previous uh, treatment method. Thank you. My name is Luziane Perrin. I am a student in Guyana Grigorievich lab, and my title is Invertebrate Confer Leading Skills to Invading Breast Cancer Cells. When a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, if the tumor is still locally contained, then surgeons can efficiently remove the tumor mass. In this case, the patient survival rate is 99%. However, if some cancer cells have already escaped the tumor, this means that the cancer can freely move to other organs, and unfortunately, doctors cannot cope with the disease. In this case, the patient survival rate is only 23%. Invading breast cancer cells are a major clinical problem because once they escape the tumor, there is no way of catching them back and eliminating them. Since about one out of 20 women will develop invasive breast cancer during their lifetime, it is critical that we understand how cancer cells move in our body in order to stop them from spreading. I am a microscopist and I believe that seeing things in real time as they happen is key for understanding cancer spreading. For my thesis, I decided to observe how cancer cells move using microscopes and fluorescent markers. I create spheres of thousand cancer cells mimicking the tumor and observe cells spreading over time. On the left, you can see that the magenta cells spread after two days. The green cells did not. They remained as a bowl. These magenta cells utilize invertebrate to spread. The green cells lack invertebrate. You can imagine invertebrate as a shovel that cells utilize to dig a tunnel for them to pass through. Following this, I asked the question, 
in cancer, if cancer cells are invading as a group? Is it possible that only the leader digs the tunnel using Invertopodia and that the followers do not need to dig at all? To test this, I mix the green cells and the magenta cells together. I observe that cells can organize and segregate from each other and that in some cases, the green cells start to spread following the magenta cells, like these images at the bottom. This means that to stop cancer spreading, it is enough to target the leader instead of targeting all the cancer cells. I am very excited about these results and I am now examining the communication signals between the magenta cells leading the way and the green cells following behind. These images are a demonstration of my point, but they can be classified using machine learning algorithm and further used in mathematical models to infer on the behavior of cancer cells. If we can understand how a cancer cell becomes a leader, we can target the leaders to stop the invasion of the group. For example, Invertopodia can be used in the clinics to predict and stop cancer spreading. Thank you.